Hello again. As you all know, I'm Jake Crawford, and joining me for the first time on this channel is... Matt Charlson. And in case you're wondering, yes, he is the brother of my reoccurring guest, my cousin, Nick. <laughs> Welcome, Matt. Thanks for having me. Great to have you here. And Matt, like me, is a pretty big movie buff, and he's familiar with a couple of fellow reviewers here on YouTube, and I don't think you're that familiar with The Cinema Snob, though. I've seen a few of his videos, but not like too many. The Cinema Snob, who as many people know, is Brad Jones. He's one of my all-time favorite reviewers. Like, he's probably my number one or number two favorite at this point, and I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I've uh, recently contributed to Brad's Indiegogo campaign for his new film, Another Cinema Snob Movie. And I've been trying to promote it myself, help promote it with all the other big contributors. Um, I'm one of the people who donate enough that I'm going to be credited as an associate producer on the film. Which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I thought I'd react to one of his older reviews. This is from like 2008 or 9. And just to show everybody and Matt where he was before, this is uh, Brad's review for a shot on Shittio movie, <laughs> which is a movie that was filmed on VHS tapes mm -hmm. called Black Devil Doll from Hell. It's, uh, I haven't watched this in a while, but I remember this was quite a film. Sounds like it's quite a film. <laughs> Video violence. <laughs> there is, is no way in hell, no reason why I should be sitting here reviewing this movie. <laughs> It's your shtick? I cannot think of any sort of logical explanation or something that would make sense to the fact that this movie was released. This movie would make a seedy porn shop owner slash rapist want to hide the movie behind the counter for fear that he would be judged negatively <laughs> as a person. Never mind the fact that the movie was made because we've all made shitty movies, but the fact that this yeah. movie Same and I got released, that somebody saw this movie and distributed it, well, that should make every kindergartner with a camcorder proud. Because <laughs> it certainly... It, it certainly paves the way for movies that feature ants burning. <laughs> I would call this film shot on shittio, because it is. It certainly is. But you don't know how shitty this movie looks. <laughs> this movie makes Crazy Fat Ethel 2 look like Sky Captain in the World of Tomorrow. You could make a frame-by-frame stick-figure replica of this film in a flip book and it would look better than the quality of this flick. <laughs> but now, here comes the tragic part where I actually have to show you clips of it. <laughs> and I feel like a doctor informing a patient that they are about to die. <laughs> It's funny that he talks about the bad quality of the film. Yeah. <laughs> Do I really his own videos at the time had this quality? Yeah. I possibly say that would make 
this movie look shittier than just that little bit of footage. How about the fact that the opening credit sequence goes on for six minutes? This is not Once Upon a Time in the West. And how sad is it that the only reason that this movie is over an hour long is because of the opening credits? Does the director of this shit really want his name up there for 30 whole seconds? Plus, there's a dance sequence that sounds less like a synthesizer and more like a tea kettle. In fact, that's what it Is sounds like. Is he grinding like in her ass? <laughs> he might be on his head. Hard to tell with the camera quality. Yeah. It has something to do with a killer doll. A faithful churchgoer named Helen Black purchases the doll at a local shop. And if you didn't know she was religious, there's about a five-minute montage of different religious items in her home while she talks on the phone to her horny friend. I don't know why she's talking on the phone when her friend is clearly just in the next fucking room. Battle with how is your daughter Sherry? Good as she said. I really believe it's her prayer to her whole life. It's a little hard to know what the backstory is on the doll because the damn fire alarm soundtrack gets in the fucking way. Is that meant to be music? I don't even know what they were trying to go for with that. <laughs> Once again, this movie was released mm. on video in 1984. Who knew that that year would be much worse than Orwell ever fucking predicted. <laughs> well, so Helen Black had been saving herself for marriage. Oh, once this dog gets a good look yeah. at this big load of sexy, it's a one-way ticket to woman doll fetish porn. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Splinters, baby, splinters. <laughs> <laughs> That's really the rest of the movie. A lot of doll fucking. <laughs> this plot's about as thick as Kool-Aid. And there are scenes where it's clearly a little kid dressed in doll's clothing. Oh shit, I almost forgot. Because believe me, that would be as tragic as an orphanage fire. The doll talks. Tell you like that bitch. This bitch! Wake up, bitch! <laughs> bitch! I said, wake up, bitch! <laughs> I can't tell what he's doing there. Yeah. Well, he's shooting something. Uh-huh. So yeah, he talks, and he's fucking rude, too. What you stop for? Because I want you to pay for it, bitch. <laughs> and without even fucking leaving his phone number, he takes off the next morning. Clearly because the bitch is just fucking crazy. You know, now that she's had the pleasure of doll love, she seeks out men from uh, other inviters and the like, but sadly, none of them satisfy her because their penises aren't made out of tree branches. <laughs> and what did she expect from this guy anyway? He's the guy who sells stolen merchandise in front of her house. The doll is a better fit. She ends up uh, trying again later with other people, but no man can satisfy her. Not even Huggy Bear. <laughs> this movie's so unsexy that thinking about porno holocaust is actually giving me an erection. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh, this movie is like child's play crossed with genital warts. It's like Trilogy of Terror meets the smell of jock itch. This movie... It's really fucking bad. <laughs> we end up getting a flashback scene to when she first bought the doll. And here's the effect that they used. I have sold this puppet on four other occasions. And each time, it finds its way back to the Jesus. Store. Didn't realize that was a flashback at first, because it looked like one of my nightmares staring at me right in the fucking face. <laughs> Turns out, though, that the doll is back at the shop. And Helen repurchases the item, which is put in the exact same box as before. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been easier just to carry the fucking doll out of the box? I've seen videos of skateboarders getting their limbs broken that are better edited than this. 
you know is bad when you can see brief images of the VCR blue screen in between <laughs> some shots. There are times when it when it looks like I'm watching somebody's amateur porn. If you were to show this movie at a bachelor party, the groom would pray for the interruption of a hooker with a gimp leg. <laughs> Boy, shot on shittio has come a long fucking way. <laughs> and once again, this fucking movie was released. No wonder there are so many religious elements in this movie, because for this movie to see anything outside the walls of Alcatraz proves that there is a supreme being up there in the clouds. And the director owes the spiritual world a huge fucking favor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to write letters of apology to 96% of the directors whose movies I reviewed. Because at the time I reviewed those movies, I had not yet <laughs> seen Black Devil Doll from Hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what did you think of the cinema snob, like Brad Jones as a reviewer? I like him. I think he's got, like, a nice comedic touch. Yeah. Like, he's kind of, like, you can tell that he, like, he, like, but when he's watching the movie, I bet he's, like, definitely kind of thinking, like, all right, what are some of the, like, what are some jokes I can say that are going to make this more funny to the audience? And I kind of think that he, like, just does a really good job at that. Yeah. Like, Brad can, he watches his movies, and... He uh, takes notes, writes mm -hmm. scripts, and in some rare cases, he has been able to watch the movie, make notes, film, and release the video all within a day. Really? <laughs> so yeah, he's very talented and very good at getting these things out fast. Yeah. And this is one of his earliest, like I said. Um, it doesn't uh, say when it came out. I think, based on the quality, I'm thinking 2000. Eight or nine, yeah. pro probably 2009, and I mentioned how he's joking about bad quality. Mm -hmm. I've seen this one. <laughs> well, Brad's excuse for that kind of thing is, I'm reviewing shitty movies. It's not like I have to go for high quality uh, cameras. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, his this video was one of many that he shot apparently on his old high eight tape camera mm -hmm. which he used for like the first three years of the show and he says he stopped using it not because he wanted a better camera but just because it broke <laughs> <laughs> he's got a great sarcastic wit to him yeah and he plays the role of a pompous art film critic well uh, but at the same time gives his own uh, vulgar twist to it mm -hmm. I like the part of the beginning when he was just kind of talking about how like the uh, only reason the movie is over an hour is because of the, the uh, opening <laughs> credit scene and he's like I'm sure the director did not want his name up there for more than 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> and I just thought like it's just a little like comments like that kind of that just make her like make all the difference in that review and just make it like so funny so and I've seen movies that will make their end credits as long so mm -hmm. it's of a certain length mm -hmm. but yeah Brad he can deliver such great uh punchlines like when he reviewed a movie where two people who look very similar are making out he or one's giving the other a hand job he says i only like incest when george lucas does it <laughs> wait no i don't <laughs> moment by moment reveal yeah <laughs> and uh Brad's one of those guys who hasn't changed a ton in his uh, years as a reviewer. Like, he's changed sets, and there was a year where he had to do his reviews sitting on the floor, because um, it was a moving slash robbery situation where he was limited to what he could use. <laughs> but uh, he's kept up the same format, and unlike certain people, it still works extremely well for him. A lot of it having to do with his uh, good sense of humor and writing. Mm -hmm. Definitely from this, just like the writing aspect, like you could just tell he just puts like so much thought into what he's gonna say, and like definitely like, and it's it's probably like a process of trial and error. Like he definitely like tries a ton of jokes that don't work, or like he knows won't work, and then like he'll just keep like coming up with new ones until he gets one he's like happy with. I guess a good thing to end on would be, 
how does Black Devil Doll from Hell look to you? Looks like a movie I probably don't think I'm going to see. <laughs> what if I asked you to review it with me someday? Then I would definitely watch it, because the one thing about this movie, it's, it's, it's definitely a movie that you don't need to see, but it's definitely hilarious if you do see it, because it just looks like the most ridiculous movie ever created. <laughs> You wonder what was the thought that went into whoever made this? Nothing. I don't think I don't think anyone was thinking when they made this. <laughs> One of the comments on this old video by a guy a regular commenter on Brad's work, Speedy Eric One, is I'm pretty sure the director Chester Novel Turner has a special place in hell waiting for him. Definitely agree with that comment. <laughs> yeah. This guy made another movie that Brad reviewed called Tales from the Quad Dead Zone. And uh, here are some of the other shot on shittio titles Brad's reviewed. Crazy Fat Ethel 2, Video Violence, <laughs> Wood Chipper Massacre, Savage Vengeance. I like um, Crazy Fat Ethel 2 because it makes me wonder what was the first one about. I really... I'm feel like I can't watch that one without watching the first one, you know, so I first make sure one, I get everything. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but the first one doesn't even have, the first one wasn't even called Crazy Fat Ethel. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Brad reviewed a movie about a rapist ventriloquist dummy. <laughs> Hit a film that looks horrible, doesn't seem like it was well acted, and fun fact, the dummy with the dreadlocks was based on, uh, Rick James. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen a few shot on Shidio movies. Uh, some of them pretty bad. Yeah. A good one I saw was called Cannibal Camp Out. Like, that was actually surprisingly pretty enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I recommend that one. But anyway, once again, love the Cinema Snob, and if you have a few bucks to spare, contribute to his Indiegogo campaign before it ends. There's still a few days left, I believe. And, uh, glad you enjoyed it, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming, and hope to have you back someday. Hopefully I'm back someday, too. <laughs> Later. See ya.